Blessed be the name of the Lord. Reverend Braden, peace of the Lord. I invite everyone to stand up. We're going to open our Bibles in the book of Second Kings. Second Kings. Second Kings chapter five. We're going to read only verse one. Verse one. Amen. Is here in the projection. Let's read together. Let's read. Now, Naaman, command of the army of king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. Amen. The brethren can sit down. My brethren, this story is a story that is very well known in the midst of the evangelicals. Because this story uh, it tells, uh, it speaks of a miracle in the life of a man that had an infirmity, incurable infirmity. Even though he was a man, a valored man, like the Bible says, Naaman, Naaman was a well-known man, was a noble man. He was the chief of the army, of the Syrian army. For sure, he was a general, a man that, during his battles, he was he never was never afraid. Was a great strategist in war. A man that gave many. Uh, joy to his people, a well-respected man. I imagine this man walking on the streets and people seeing him. The joy that people had in seeing him, the security that people felt in knowing that their country was a country where there was there were men, valiant men, men, men that didn't go away but always were ready to fight for their country to defend their nation um, I have no words to uh, no other word to describe Naaman was a noble man a well-known man was a good professional well trained for sure he carried with him many medals and uh, knowledge men for the battles Naaman was all of this <coughs> to the point that the Bible even mentioned a man with great respect a, a man of valor but it is interesting that even though he had all of those things the Bible says however he was leopard imagine this the life of this man Imagine the struggle in his interior. A man that was victorious in many battles gave um, joy to many people, but he could never overcome the battle uh, with his own infirmity. But a leper. It is interesting that in one of the wars, it was brought, uh, imprisoned a uh, young lady. The Bible doesn't say her name. 
and she was working as a servant in the house of Naaman. She knew his pain for sure. She knew his struggle, his difficulty. And one day, she spoke to her owner. I wish my my lord could be in my land because if he was there I'm sure that there he was going to be cured because there are prophets there there is a God there and for sure if he was there he was going to be cured the wife of Naaman heard that and she spoke to him listen to me uh, our servant said this and the first thing that Naaman said uh, Naaman did was to go and speak with the king and he told the king what he had heard and asked permission to go there to go to another country to to speak with another king and maybe who knows I don't know if he had faith at this moment in order to believe in what was possibly could possibly happen but Naaman, he was motivated, he was, he had the desire to go to Israel and the God said, Naaman, you can go, go and even bring gifts, bring silver, I'm going to give you a letter and you're going to take this on your hands and when the king of Israel sees this letter, he'll do everything to help you. And Naaman, with all of this at hand, he prepared a committee and and departed to Israel and when he arrived in Israel Naaman presented himself to the king of Israel and the king of Israel was shocked how can I do anything for you I'm no God I don't have the means to cure anybody or give and give life or take life away this is a trap the king of Syria wants to find a reason to start a fight. He ripped his clothes, he was shocked, he was very upset and when the prophet heard what was going on, what the king had done, the prophet Elisha sent a message to the king ask Naaman to go to my house, ask him to pass by my house, because this man will see that truly there is a, a prophet in Israel. And Naaman left the palace and went to seek the prophet. My brethren, this story is a story that if, you, if we analyze our, our own lives, it's a beautiful story. It's a story that gives us motivations to continue desiring to live. It's a story that can make us, make you leave this place, who knows, with hope for life. Because this story speaks a lot about us about our own, our own life, our daily lives. We are like that. Many times we we begin uh, to analyze our own lives and you may feel like you are a good person. You may be a good citizen, a noble person. You may be a good son, a good husband, a man or a woman of uh, valor. You can be a, a person that is kind to others. You can be a valiant person, a, a successful person in life. You may even think that you are a knowledgeable person. You may have been able to uh, achieve many things in life. You are a rich person. But with all of this, there is a however in your life and there is a however 
in my life. Because this, however, ours goes after men. No matter how much you are successful, no matter and that you think that you can have been able to achieve everything that could have achieved, we will never be able to achieve 100%. There will always be something. There is always be some something missing or a necessity. There is always going to be something that you have to think and analyze and want. And and you might think I would want to change everything that I have so that this deficient in, deficiency in my life, this problem in this area in my life would be changed. Have you thought about that? Sometimes you look to other people, right? Sometimes you think, look, I would want to have a son like that. I would want to have a husband like this. I would like to have a wife like that. But when you begin to really know people, you realize that there is a however in their, in their lives, in the same way that there is in my life, in your life, and this however, it hurts. This however uh, goes after us, because you know why? Because there are battles that you can overcome, but there are battles that you, you cannot overcome. All the battles that Naaman were uh, able to be victorious were under his control. The strategy that he used, for sure, the man that he brought with him, the type of weapons, it doesn't matter. The battles that he was able to overcome that brought joy to him and to his people, it w they worked out. But, the, however, he was a leper. It, went, it was something that uh, haunted Naaman. He was always missing something. He was always in need of something. But in the same way that there was uh, this woman here in the house of Naaman, they gave him a word, they gave him a reason, they awoke him for something that could change his uh, circumstance. There are people like this that are always speaking to us about the prophet of Israel. There is always someone speaking to us, speaking to us about the prophets of God, prophecy of God. The prophet here represents the prophecy of God. There is always someone reporting to us, giving witness. Look, if if he was there in Israel, he was going to be cured. He would be cured. For sure, somebody may have spoken to you. Somebody may have spoken to you today. Look, this problem in your life only Jesus. There's no other way. Syria doesn't have for you this cure. Syria doesn't have for you the solution to this problem. Only in Jesus. Only in Israel. Only in the presence of God. Only where the prophecy is giving its proper worth. Where only where the prophecy is being spoken about. And the prophecy that is most important today is the one about the coming of the Lord Jesus. There's no other prophecy that causes an, a greater impact than the prophecy about the coming of the Lord Jesus. Because only Jesus overcame everything. Only Jesus was victorious in everything. And the church has this mission to say that. The church is represented here by this young lady. She was from Israel. She knew the Lord. She knew the role of the prophet. She knew the word of the prophet. In the same way, the Lord is using the church. The Lord is using our lives to speak this and to proclaim that Jesus is coming soon. And you, one day, may have heard this. You went in here tonight. For sure you have heard this. I'm sure of it. Otherwise, you, you would not be here. If you enter here, it's because there is a however in your life as well. There is a however in your life. I don't know what it is. But I know that you are seeking for something better. And you, like me, you, you're seeking something for you, for my life, something better for us in every way. 
But there is a however in our lives. This, the however of Naaman was the leper. Leprosy was a physical problem. But what is your however? You need to put this however in the behalf before the author of the Lord. Today you left the place where you were. You were reading the presence of the Lord. When we began the service, pleading for the blood of Jesus, because there is power in the blood of Jesus, power to deliver, power to redeem your soul, to transform your heart, power to cure you, power to make you, to place you in the presence of the Lord. Today you are here in the presence of the prophet, no longer in the presence of the king or in the, in the denomination, in the presence of man, no. Tonight we are in the pres presence of the prophet Elisha. And this prophet is the person of the Lord Jesus. And when he arrives there, in the house of the prophet, he, his committee, his uh, entourage, the prophet sends a message to Naaman. Hey, tell Naaman that he needs to go to, to the Jordan River and uh, sink seven times. And on the seventh time that he dives, he will be cured. Uh, Naaman was very upset. What is that? This is crazy. I'm, I came all the way from my land. This great difficulty walking all the way here. On those... <coughs> on pay <coughs> on paved streets I came here and I was hoping this man was going to receive me pray for me call for the name of his God a prayer with lay of hands over my sickness and about over my life and pray songs I thought he was going to make a full service here after all I came here with my entourage if I wanted to in Syria the rivers there they're much better than the Jordan River they're much better they're cleaner but Naaman he forgot that man is to hear the word of the Lord man doesn't need to see a leader of a nation man doesn't need to hear a message a, a very well prepared message Man doesn't need to give a message that with a flurry so beautiful that it's not necessary. Man needs to hear the, the word of the Lord. Man needs to hear the prophets of God. And what the prophet Elisha told him was a prophecy. Send him so he can wash himself seven times in the Jordan River. Why? What is the Jordan River speaks of speaks of the person of the Lord Jesus. The Jordan River is the lowest river, and part of its uh, bed is the lowest river compared to the sea level. The Jordan River speaks about uh, the meaning of the the word Jordan speaks of the one that went down. It speaks of the Lord Jesus that came down from eternity. He left the glory of the Father, the one that he left everything came to this world, came down to this world, to the depth of this life, in order to give man what man needed. Jordan River speaks of the person of the Lord Jesus. That's what the prophet Elisha spoke. He was pointing out to Jesus. Two thousand years uh, later, what was going to happen to Jesus? When Jesus, when he needed someone to represent man in order to fight for man's life Jesus made himself available to man here am I Jordan River speaks of Jesus the one who came down and now he is on the right hand side of the father as a victorious one not a, 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 a Jesus man the one who was rejected trampled on criticized forsaken no, but as a, a victorious Jesus, a Jesus that was victorious against death in our place. Jordan speaks exactly about this, but Naaman didn't understand this. Naaman want, wanted a ritual, he wanted a, a recognition. 
And you who entered here tonight, you need to hear this. Jesus is coming back. You need to dive into the Jordan River and se sever seven times. If you need a blessing, somebody told Naaman, Naaman, pay attention. If he asked you something more important, something more difficult, wouldn't you do that? Yes. So then, let's go. Enter into this river. Do what the man asked. Go there and dive seven times and you see how is, what is going to happen. The Jordan River was right beside him. The blessing of Naaman was very close to him. He just needed to hear the voice of the prophecy. He need, just needed to hear the voice of God and dive into the river. And then he went one time. He dove second time, three, fourth, sixth, seventh, and, and nothing happened after the sixth one. But when he dove for the seventh time, he was cured. His skin was like the skin of a baby. Blessed be the man of the Lord. And that's what God does in man's life. Man, when he hears the voice of the Spirit, when man surrenders himself to God, when he overcomes the barrier of human reason, what is rational, what is human, God transforms his heart. God transforms his understanding. God removes the shell, the skin, everything that was uh, what is uh, from uh, his own pride, everything that is uh, uh, on the outside, God begins to remove. And God makes you be uh, a newborn with the skins of a child because man needs to be like a child. Man needs to leave the old man and become a child in order to receive the kingdom of God. And Naaman did that seven times. My brother, you tonight, if you want a blessing from God, you need to dive in seven times because seven speaks of the perfection of God. Seven speaks of what is perfect, what is complete. You don't, you cannot just uh, uh, dip only the, the tip of your fingers, only your, your toes. No, oh, no, I'm going to go there, but I'm not sure if I'm going to go. I'm just going to touch the water. No, the gospel, what the Lord left for us, the living word, it has to be lived in the depth. Naaman had to dive in seven times. It, didn't, it was not enough to dive two, three, four, or five. It had to be seven times. And you who entered here tonight, you also need to go deeper into the mysteries of God. You need to allow the Holy Spirit to take you. You need to allow the Holy Spirit to, the Holy Spirit to allow you to know you with the mysteries of God. What you never imagined to know, whenever, whatever you, you never imagined that you were going to be, God is going to transform your life. My brother and sister, if you're leaving your however's still without overcoming them, it's because you're not allowing God to take control of your life. If God is not changing the way you are, if God is not changing your uh, personality, your mood, it's because you're you're not diving deeper in what is the gospel of the Lord, in what is the word of God. But tonight, in the name of Jesus, you will hear the voice of the prophecy. You're not going to hear now a message of a church, Maranatha, no, nothing like that. We're not worried about any of it. Name it, he went there, he, he took gold, silver, he brought a lot of stuff with him. But the king asked him to return everything. God's not here uh, seeking your personal uh, possessions. God does not want you to give an offer so that you, later on you were successful. No, God doesn't want this. God doesn't want you to come only on Sundays and only and hear a message. God does not want you to be a Christian only here in the church. God wants you to be a Christian, a, an evangelical man of God. 24 hour a day of day you need to dive in seven times completely because seven is the perfection of God 
and you will only be able to achieve this in Jesus. You are not going to be able to achieve this because you are a man of a good name, a man that has recognition, you have good worth because you are a good heart. No, forget about this. Because God sees your heart. And God tonight is looking to your heart. God's not receiving you here. He's not blessing you because of what you have or because of what you are. God wants to bless you because of what you need. And you, what you need is to open up your heart and accept Jesus as the Savior of your life. What you need is to accept the Word of God. Because the church will only be victorious through the Word and, and for the blood. The church will only be victorious if, you, if it is listening to, word, to the Word of God. If it is paying attention to, if leaving the Word of God, you will only be victorious if you leave this. It's not enough for you to just uh, wet the, the tip of your toes. No, not, not, you're not enough for you to just read the, the Bible on the weekends. You're wasting your time. If you think the gospel is this, it's only come here on Sunday night or Saturday night and read in the verse that the pastor is asking. No, I'm, I'm sorry. God wants you to dive in. God wants you, you, it wants to see your life every day in His presence. God is missing the moments in, in, of intimacy with Him where you are kneeling down, praying with Him. And the early dawns, going from one place of work to another one, praying for, praying and speaking with Him, and praying for your family. God is waiting for this intimacy with you. Dive in seven times. Nobody's calling you to be a member of Church Maranatha. No, forget about this. You need to know the King of Israel. This is what we want to invite you to do tonight, to surrender at, on God, at God's feet. Naaman brought a lot of things with him, but was, none of it was necessary. You know what God wants to see? He wants to see the, uh, your heart. Uh, Naaman heard, oh, there's a man in Israel that well, is going to cure me. Okay, I'm going. God wants to see your attitude. If you want to be um, successful in your life, people want to be successful, right? They want to have prosperity. Prosperity. You look at them. They don't go. They don't study. Ten o'clock in the morning, they're still sleeping. How are, are they going to be victorious in life? God wants to see how you behave. The 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 head of the family has to wake up early. Has, they have to work out work hard in the same way God wants to see man's actions God's ask, asking you to be, live a new life God is inviting you to change the way you behave only he can do this it's not uh, it doesn't matter for me to speak about this all night it's not going to be it's going to be worthless you need to want do you want the blessing of God do you want God to work in the area of our life which is deficient, that needs a fix-up? You want this? Open up your heart. Speak with God. And you will see how God will operate in your life. You will see how God will fix up your marriage, how God will fix up your professional life, your sentimental life. Leave it all at, in God's hands. It's a personality. You're a personality you're angry God will fix it up but it has to be seven times it's not enough for you to do a want and then tomorrow living the same old life leave this old life behind and 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 the moment you enter into the spirit and you dive into the Lord and allow the Lord to control your life God will change your skin God will change your character God is change your personality God you change your life you see how, how different you will be. Because that's what God has for you. Has for many. Many are in the presence of the Lord. And people that are transformed. People that are, they were criminals. Assassins. Bad people. Now they're here in church. They're in church serving the Lord. People that were completely 
bankrupt people. They were uh, 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 to the point of jumping on the bridge, out of the bridge. But the Lord rescued them. A, a life that didn't have anything going for them. Now they're in the church because now they they have met the King of Israel. They left the world. They have Syria. Syria has no cure. Nemo is going to die in that way with all his possession, all the recognition he had. A noble man. Yes, so what? He was going to die. He was not going to take anything with him. In the same way, God has done everything in the same way with us and that's what God wants to do with you and now the question is do you want this this is uh, the right actions that you need we can push you we can uh, give you the instruction sometimes pastor is a, a little annoying because the pastor you didn't do this until now to fix this up change this sometimes we are a little annoying but you will be victorious well I don't, I don't mind that you call me annoying, but we I cannot give up on my brethren. We cannot give up on them. We cannot be defeated. If you see someone that is going to a, di a bad direction, you can say, oh, you can tell this person, I wish he was in, on my land because there we'll, he was going to meet Jesus. Sometimes we are in a struggle with our children, with this and that. And I wish he, we, he was the presence of the Lord, listening to the voice of the Lord, with experience, listen, singing praises to the Lord. That's what the parents want. And that's what children sometimes want for their parents. My father was there. If he was in the church, he was not in the drugs and alcohol, bringing so much sadness to the family. Do you want it? I'm going to show here. I need to show here in the projection. I'm going to make an invitation. Bye. If you think that this is the right time, read this verse with me. But you need to speak. Because the Bible says the following. If you confess to salvation, you don't, you cannot only just speak on your heart. You need to speak out loud. You don't have to scream, <laughs> but you need to speak out loud. Whoever is beside you can also speak in a loud voice. And you tonight will confess to the Lord that He is the only Savior of your life. And you see that God will transform from this point forward. He's going to give a new beginning to your life. Your, story is going to be changed tonight it's not going to be uh, tomorrow it's going to be tonight because you entered here you are in the presence of the prophet you are in the presence of the king of kings the lord of lords the doctor of doctors who is the lord jesus amen the invitation is not for you to become a member of the church maranatha no no we don't even have this if you ask how many members uh, we have in my church, I don't know. What is the book? We don't have this. This invitation is an invitation for you to become an eternal citizen. You're not going to make any commitment with me or with the Manatha Church in Pompano. You're, you're making a commitment with God. But this is only if you want. You're going to ask those that want. Let us read together. Uh, people from the church also have to read, not only the visitors. There are many people here in the church They have not dove in seven times. Many. They are here. They know. They are on the second, the third time, the fourth, fifth. There are those that are even the sixth time. But there are also those that dove seven times in depth. More than 90%, I would say, that dove in. And they are living new life in Jesus. They are enjoying salvation in Jesus. They are enjoying what is the benefit of salvation. Because salvation is lived here, my brethren. You are not doing this this whole preparation here not to be saved there. You are really living your salvation here. You know? you know why? Because when you dive, dive in, you become a new creature. Begin to 
think differently, you begin to act differently, you don't want to um, trick somebody, anybody else in. You leave all these stuffs behind. You live a new life. You try to be a better person, but in order for this to happen, you need to dive in seven times. N not where you want, here. Maybe you might think, oh boy, I'm going to start by tomorrow. I'm going to start, but not today. I'm going to start tomorrow because tomorrow is going to be a better day. Monday is a good day, but you're going to. But you have to start right now. If you entered here, it's because it wants you to start right now. Unless you don't want, it. let us read together. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. You accepted uh, a call from God, it's a call from God in order for you to be a, a person saved in Jesus. Amen. Let us sing a song. You're going to be with your eyes closed, glorifying the Lord. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. I invite everyone to stand up once again. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. I want to praise you once again tonight. Thank you for this word. And once again, Lord, brought to our memory that you are the only God. You're the God that cures us, a God that saves us, that through your word, Lord, we are blessed when we hear your word and we obey it, Lord. That's where we are cured, Lord. Lord, teach us every day to surrender ourselves in the waters of your word, Lord, so that we may be obedient to you, Lord, in every moment of our lives. Lord, we thank you because tonight there was salvation in your house. Thank you, Lord, because once again, we confess with our lips that you, that you are the Lord and Savior of our lives. Lord, thank you very much because the operation of your spirit is in our midst, Lord. Lord, thank you, Lord. Give us the means to be the light of the world, Lord, so that we can preach about your truth and your salvation, Lord, to those that are lost, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We pray to you in the name of Jesus. What is the song? God, El Shaddai.
Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to Jesus. Lord Father, we praise your holy name, Lord. Because by faith, we know that you are in this place. We know, Lord, that we didn't come here in vain. But we ask that tonight, we know that tonight you operated in the hearts. We were able, Lord, to transform. And we know that our trials and our difficulties, what that sometimes may have brought anguish, sadness, it is something that sometimes, uh, many times, bring us to your presence, Lord. That's why we want to praise your name, Lord, because uh, you have reached us, Lord. You have been able to reach us, Lord. You have delivered us from evil. You have protected us, Lord. Although the world is out there walking in large strides towards hell, we are walking in your presence. Trusting, Lord, and aware that we are on the right path. That our choice was the best choice of accepting Jesus as the Savior of our lives. We praise the Lord and we confess that we are yours and that you are our King, and that you are God, and that we love to be in your presence. There's no Lord, any other place that we might want to be, this, not right now, than to be in your presence, Lord. Lord, we praise you for the visitation of this Spirit that brings joy and renewal, that brings strengthening, Lord, that sustain us, Lord. We praise the Lord and ask that you may accept our service and that we may have a week of victories in your presence, Lord. As I pray that we say in the name of Jesus, in your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forever. Amen. The church may sit down. The Lord also has given a spiritual gift of a man that entered here and is trying every way to improve his life, to achieve something better. But whatever he does is bankrupt. Nothing works out. Nothing goes, moves forward. But tonight, God gave him a bridge it's like if he wanted to I, I'm trying to discern the gift it's like if he was trying to cross from one side to the river from one side to the other and he tried but he was not able to but a bridge was placed there so he could walk over the river and get to the other side if you you, you have been able to achieve this in, in the Lord Jesus because God has seen, God has seen you, your, your actions, the desire of your heart, and amen. You're going to leave this place being able to glorify the name of the Lord. And also the other spiritual gifts that have been spoken about. If you need a prayer assistance, we are here at your disposal, the ushers, the deacons. And we want to pray for you so that you, you may take completely the blessing of the Lord with you. I'd like to remind that Friday we're going to have a special service, a glorification to the Lord for the marriage of our brother, brothers, uh, Samir and Guilherme. The whole church is invited. It's going to be church, our church there in Hollandale because of their greatest space. We, we, need to, uh, we need to leave this place. The Lord will give us a blessing. Our, however, 
of the church is to leave this place. We have this structure, but however, we don't have uh, a larger place, but we're going to pray to the Lord so He can give us this blessing. So we can find this place, the resource God has already given. You just need to find a place. The most difficult God already, already gave us the resource, but now we need to find a place that we have been, not been able to find. But we're going to pray for this uh, subject. And I would, anyways, the peace of the Lord to the whole church. Amen. Thank you. 